And a biotech company, Avesho, has released its quarterly activities report as it pushes ahead with human trials for its oral CBD products. To tell us more is CEO Paul Gavin. Paul, welcome to Ausbiz. Wonderful to have you here with us. So the company sort of pivoted into pot or CBD, as I said, to be specific. So basically your technology allows that product to be delivered to the body as efficiently as possible. So, you know, put some meat on those bones. Sure. So look, the company has a, a proprietary technology, I guess, called TPM. Uh, and we've spent the last 15 years really using it to um, reformulate drug products that are currently on market to increase their absorption or overcome another deficiency. Now, the medicinal cannabis space has a real issue with the absorption of cannabinoids. So the molecules themselves are lipid soluble. They're really poorly absorbed by the body. So really when you, when you swallow a medicinal cannabis product, you're only absorbing anywhere from sort of three to 8% of the cannabinoids that are in the product. And so what we've sought to do is use our technology to really increase the absorption of those molecules so that you have a product that works uh, much better uh, potentially allowing you to treat conditions that are uh, unable to be treated with the current products or potentially reducing the dose, which is a big um, cost saving to patients. So have you partnered with another company to bring this potentially to fruition? Tell us where you're at on that journey toward commercialization. Sure. So look, uh, we when we identified that we'd probably play in the space, again, because we're, <clears throat> we're not natives to medicinal cannabis, we've spent all our time in biotech. When we really identified that the problems that cannabis has were ones that we could overcome, we, we started running down this track uh, alone because uh, we really had the skills to do it. And we, we conducted a small uh, capital raise at the start of this year to really fund a lot of that research and, and drive those programs forward. Uh, and so they're entering clinical trials very, very uh, soon. Um, I guess the other part to your question around partnering is that uh, it's a very unique space for us because we're used to developing drugs that will have partners, you know, as they get much further down the track, closer to commercialization. But the, the thing about medicinal cannabis is because it can be sold now, there's opportunities to derive revenue earlier. And so we have a very clear focus on the clinical development and taking the product towards pharmaceutical registration, but we're already in discussions with potentially interested parties about taking the formulations that we have now, or indeed our technology and adding it to their portfolios to start uh, deriving uh, revenue from the cannabis space much earlier than we ordinarily could. Okay, what regulatory hurdles are still in your way though? Uh, well, the local regulatory hurdle, hurdle is the TGA. And so the TGA late last year down scheduled CBD, which was a, you know, a big game changing thing for the local sector. So basically what that down scheduling meant was that in the future, CBD products could be approved as over the counter medicines. Now there are a couple of um, caveats to that approval. The first was that you had to have all the clinical trial data and the safety and the efficacy to prove that the material works. And this is something that's been absent from the medicinal cannabis space. And the second main problem was that you had to have a maximal daily dose of 150 milligrams, which is borderline therapeutic for a range of the indications. And so from our perspective, being a company that knows how to do clinical trials and can increase the absorption of 150 milligrams, it looked like something that was particularly suited for us. But it uh, can't be overemphasized that the TGA hasn't done this before. So as far as regulatory hurdles, it is it is very it is unique that a the TGA will will get a drug go straight to over the counter. They usually come in as a prescription medicine, and then over the years, when everyone's comfortable with their safety, they're down scheduled to over the counter. And secondly, it's it's rare that the TGA ever sees a medicine uh, first. So usually the medicine's gone through the FDA or the European uh, regulatory associations, and the TGA gets to leverage a bit off. Um, what the overseas regulatory markets have found. So the TGA have their work cut out for them on this. Um, and so everyone's, everyone is very waiting to see how they will handle a lot of these uh, applications. Yeah, so there's a lot riding on that. Uh, we've got something on screen saying you had about 4.8 million, 4 million in cash and bank at the end of the quarter. So I know that it's not just this uh, CBD um, product that you are you know, developing, you also are looking to use the technology in animals as well. So there's the money, you know what your operating expenses are, you're investing heavily in R&D. So how long is that runway? 
Look at this at this moment. I mean, this was this was money that was raised earlier in the year, and this is to really get the um, the cannabinoid, the CBD product, deep into sort of the pivotal efficacy studies that would be required for registration. As far as the animal health and some of the other uh, non-cannabinoid programs that we have, really a lot of that work now is being done with partners. So animal health is an example of that. Uh, you know, we did all the work a couple of years ago to prove that the TPM itself added a lot of value to the space and then it was about licensing out and seeking partners and so we have a large international player at the moment called ab vista that's currently examining our tpm for inclusion in animal feed products and so we're not actually investing any of our own resources in that um, but obviously in the event that they get positive results and there's a licensing deal then you know there's there's revenue for us we'll sell sell the raw material into them and so there's a lot of partnering opportunities that don't burn our cash um, and that cash is being reserved for the cannabinoid programs. Okay, so just very quickly, I'm an investor. I'm always looking for the next catalyst, especially in biotechs where there's sort of, <clears throat> you know, there, there's, you've got to have faith, if I can put it that way, in a lot of, of biotech sort of companies. So what's the next potential catalyst, Paul? So as I say, clinical trials. So, um, I mean, we'll have some feedback soon about the, the overarching development program um, to take the product all the way to registration. But we're starting our big uh, phase one PK study very end of Q3. So patients are walking into the clinic end of Q3 and will be dosed across the, the first weeks of October. And that'll really characterize the absorption profile of this novel formulation that we have. Uh, there's also a couple of other announcements around other clinical trials that we'll look to get at soon, but the next sort of six to 12 months, it's all about um, you know, results coming out of human clinical trials that really differentiate the product and take it forward, and also potentially um, some partnering discussions around the same products. Got it. Well, Paul, keep us in the loop. Thank you for joining us today. No worries. Thank you. Have a good one.